Hello my squishies! Welcome to... It's not Friday, don't be confused. Uh, my, fell, my puffin fell too long. So this is take two on a different night. So if you'll give me two seconds to set up, I'll give you two seconds to get your kits out and get ready. I'm trying a new thing today. So, right, let's see if we can do this. I don't know if I can do what I'm trying to do. Nobody panic. Ah, right. Let's ignore it and felt along. Uh, so, well, if anyone's coming to join us today, I don't know because we're doing this on a different day. I'll give them a second to join us. Sometimes we have chat, sometimes not. But I will give you a quick introduction to felting before we start felting this beautiful puffin. Okay, so in your kits, oh, I see somebody here. Hello here, hello person. Um, in your kits, you've got your foam mat to felt on. This protects your surfaces and makes it easier to felt with. You can see mine's been well felted on. We've got our bit of fiber. So this is Shetland pre-felt, um, so it's just lightly felted Shetland wool that we can make the design on. We've also got our needles. So these are, don't know if this is going to focus, probably not. Focus. <laughs> Very sharp. Please do not stab yourself with them. They do sometimes break. If they break, please make sure you find all the ends and dispose of them safely. You can use needles just like this. So you can use them one or a few at a time but in your kit you've also got this needle holder which make, can make it a little bit easier to hold the needles and I'll show you how to use that just now so there's a little peg there all we're doing is popping the peg out you'll see there's a groove on the top and by take up you pop your needle in the groove with the hook over the thin end and then we're going to pop that back in. So I'll do that one more time for you. So you've got your little peg in the end, pull it out, pop your needle in the groove with the hook over the thinner end and pop the thinner end back in there. So I don't tend to use this, but it can be really useful. You can also get them with three, six, I think even up to 12 spaces for needles to go in if you want to do it with multiple at the same time. While this is in my head and before I forget, before we move on to the next bit, I ramble a lot, I apologise in advance, but feel free to rewind, rewatch, slow me down, there's buttons somewhere to slow it down and speed it up. And as my wonderful parents have discovered, you can also mute me and just watch along. So don't be afraid to rewind, watch bits again. I've got that out of the way. Right, so carrying on with what's in your kit. You've also got this stuff. So this is what we use to make the picture. This is known as tops or roving. And what it is, it's sheep's wool that's been, that's been shorn off, washed, dyed, and then brushed to form these lengths. Comes in massive, big, big lengths, but I break them down for you guys. But when you're working with this, you want to have your hands nice and far apart and just gently pull, and you'll see the individual hairs come out like that. So the reason you want to have your hands far apart is because if you've got them too close together, you're literally pulling against the end of the hair, the either end of a hair, or of a fibre. <laughs> I've forgotten the word for wool then. Um, so if you have your hands nice and far apart, you're not breaking it, you're just gently pulling them apart. And if there's any twist in it, it's not going to pull apart either because twist is what holds the yarn together, it's magical. So you want to make sure it's not twisted, your hands are nice and far apart and you can just gently pull out little bits. Easy. So let's get to actual, 
it too soon for felting? Too soon for felting. One more point before we go. So, here's a finished one that I have done and it's actually been up on the wall for a while but I just keep meaning to redo this video. I'm doing it now. So this is what we're going to finish off with today. So this is my lovely little puffin and you can see at the top in your kit you've got a dowel. Oh, things are rolling away. So to fix this dowel on, you don't have to use it, you can just make the picture and frame it yourself within another, another frame. But you can also use some of the wool provided to fix the dowel on. So you'll see on the back, it goes right the way through. So that's, if you're going to use the dowel, we're going to attach it now. So to do that, I'm going to take little bits of the blue and lay them. For this one, I'm, for this example, I'm going to do it in three sections. Just there. Place your dowel down. Push them over and then just felt, start felting and that will felt them in. So when we're felting, we're just stabbing in and out and that's all we're having to do. Now we only need to loosely felt these in at the moment because we're going to felt over them properly later on. But you can see that it started to push its way through and there's little bits coming through the back and that will hold on your dowel. Now because I don't need a dowel for this one. I'm not going to use one. But you now have this, the, the knowledge and the skill to frame it in a uh, or hang it up. I'm already rambling nonsense today. Hang it up with your dowel. Today is a day. I just want to very quickly check something before. Nope, I still don't know how to do it. Let's close this. Okay, hopefully I'm still live. I haven't broken everything. Let's get properly felting. Now, this little puffin is incredibly cute. But we're not going to touch the puffin yet. We're going to work on the background first. And then we're going to do the puffin on top. So the background, I like to start with the furthest away bits and work closer. I'm going to take the blue. And you'll see a lot of the time I'm pulling it open like this just to spread it out because it doesn't need to be it doesn't have to be a thick layer especially not at this stage so I'm taking the lightest blue the sky blue and just laying it down where I want it to be so I'm going to have my horizon line around about there so it's going to change the color of the blue this is a nice thing about felting is that you can lay it down without any fear of anything and move it about especially even even once we've felted slightly we can still pick it up and move it around and at this stage I'm only going to very gently stab it in because later on is when we're going to go and properly felt it in just now I'm just blocking in the colours Imagine we're doing an oil, oil, an oil, I can't speak, an oil painting. We're just blocking in all the colours and then we'll go in with the detail afterwards. Okay, so I've blocked in a little bit of sky. Yep, there's patches. Don't really care. I'm going to fill them in later. And then we're going to take this beautiful mid blue and that's going to be the sea blue and start to fill in the sea here so I have mild puffin facts this time but I was searching just a minute ago because I'm like oh I should probably know some facts about puffins I was searching and looked up what the Shetland name for a puffin is because this puffin is going to be called Tammy because the Shetland name for puffins is Tammy Nori. I'm probably pronouncing that terribly. But I, I did a wee quick Google search for Tammy Nori 
and the first result this was amazing i was oh, in love was the wikipedia article for tammy nori written in the scots dialect it's amazing and i was reading it like how can i this looks like a, a foreign language and yet i can understand everything and i'm like oh it's written in scots so if you ever got five minutes and want uh, an interesting read the uh, scots version of the wikipedia article on puffins is remarkably interesting <laughs> right so we've blocked in the c now and now we're going to block in the grass so the grass is going to be a mixture of all of the colors but the base color is this lightest color here and i'm just gonna lay that out quite thinly still a little does go a long way and especially because we're going to build up layers you know when you feel like you've forgotten something i feel like i've forgotten something or maybe it's because people aren't chatting because i'm doing the secret stream normally people chat away to me uh on <laughs> on the youtube comments and i get in a right pickle but because this is not the usual day and most of them have done it this, this one before um nobody's on and i'm chatting to myself okay there we have the green just very lightly blocked in looking like a mess it's at this stage it's gonna look like a mess do not worry do not panic i'm gonna fiddle with the mic very briefly yeah don't panic it will look like a mess And then magically, it'll all come together. But I want to do a little bit more work on the background before we puffin him up. I'm going to work on popping in some clouds in the sky. So I'm just going to take a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white and pop in, just sort of spread it loosely over to create effects of clouds now you can go over these again with the blue if you don't like them you can move them about you can do dark or big white fluffy clouds you could do wispy clouds the clouds are your oyster oh somebody's here hello katie <laughs> thank you for logging in <laughs> yay i'm not so alone now have you managed to steal any time to do the last one or do i not ask that question yet <laughs> okay now i got utterly distracted come on utter distraction <laughs> now we're gonna do the c so with the c there's a tiny bit of this dark blue in your kit and I'm gonna get you to start furthest away so you've got like a horizon line and then fade it down and yes do not worry it will look like a like a mishmash mishmash is that the word I'm looking for it'll look odd just now but that's fine. I keep telling myself this. And we can layer it up as well because we want to make those sort of waves and dimples in the sea. You see when you pop that thin layer on top. Oh, that's the wrong colour. It just adds to the depth. So this is my take two of doing the puffins. I did it live on the Friday a good few months ago now. Oh my god, I'm terrible. Um, but that was the, the day of disasters. And <laughs> everything was going wrong um, that day. It started, well, just it started off 
with me dropping my toothpaste down the toilet and just went downhill from there. But my live stream wasn't working, my internet was dying. So I managed to do it on my phone um, through Facebook, I think was how we did it in the end. But I want to do a proper version. So this is me doing the proper version now. So I'm going to take a tiny bit more of the white and put some white waves just down the front there. Oh, congratulations for doing the North Run, Katie. Excellent. That is a good enough excuse to have not done some felting this time. Maybe not next time. <laughs> so we've got a little bit more. Don't worry just now. I'm going to keep saying this. It's going to look like a mess. Ooh, and one important thing that I have not yet mentioned. Every so often, we want to pull your mat off give it a good smoosh and place it back down again because otherwise it'll get stuck to your mat which is never good okay let's pop in some green so I'm going to put a little bit of shadow underneath this puffin I'm going to do that with the dark green I know we haven't even got the puffin in yet and we're putting that shadow in little nori or tammy Oh, hiccups. And then I'm just going to add thin touches. Remember, we're building up here. Underneath. Oop. Try not to stab your hand. And always stab straight in and out. You never want to bend your needle when you're stabbing because that's when you're going to definitely break a needle because they are a little bit fragile. Okay. We've vaguely mostly got an outline of the background. Let's pop a puffin in. <laughs> it's like pick up a penguin but pop in a puffin. Okay. I'm sorry for my chair being rolly and squeaky today. I have moved locations and it's all very exciting. Let's start with... Let's go with the black. So let's do there. So I'm just going <laughs> to... You can see it's uh, getting some orange in it. I'm going to fill in this black area. just with a solid black. We will pop some colours on top, but for just now, just going to pop it in there. And you're trying to keep, with this black, we're trying to keep inside the lines that are drawn on. I do like to say that this is stabbing by numbers. It's going to go right over. So I'm looking for the top of the head, going right over the top of the head to the beak, like a little Elvis quiff. And it goes round, down, and in. Like a letter C we're aiming for there. Or even like, what was that character from? The Vampire Uncle from one of those 90s TV shows. And I'm going to give his back a little bump where his wings are so he's got sort of a wing a hump a hill on his back or its back I haven't decided if it's he or she yet so 
and they can neaten up these edges later on. Do not worry. And then his little tail. So we just I've just folded this bit in half there. So it's like a pointy little tail with a slight up. So it's a slight flick up on the tail. You can do a bigger or a smaller tail. Now remember, your puffin will not look like my puffin. All puffins are unique. No two puffins are the same. Just because yours is different from mine does not make it wrong. So we've blocked in the background. And now we're going to black in the background. No, we've blocked in the black. And now we're going to pop in the white. So I think all the whites are the same. Yes, they are. I know we're felting white on white, but just bear with me. It does, it makes a difference. <laughs> It'd look a bit odd if we didn't. So I'm just filling in this white area with white. And I'm going to fill in the face as well. So I, the eye will just pop that in. I'm mumbling to myself. I am so sorry. It's it's Monday. I've not spoken to people yet today. Oh no, I've spoken to a couple of people today. But the shop's been shut and I've just been in doing paperwork all day. So I've been mumbling to myself all day. And now I'm just continuing the trend. Okay, so we will again, oh, I think this puffin looks a little bit skinny. I'm going to make, I want a bigger, bigger belly on my puffin. So I'm going to just, you see there, I just, because we haven't felt it in well, I can just move it and give him a little bit of a bigger belly really easily. I think I want it to sit out a little bit more too. So again, I can just kind of shift it, scooch it out a little bit so I can put a nice round, round belly there. Excellent. Now we're going to put a little bit of shading. So for the shading, if we take the, I feel like there should be grey in this, but there is not. Take the grey that I'm going to very quickly appear like magic from the <laughs> bin behind me. And we're giving him a little bit, or isn't it's a him now, giving him a little bit of shadow with this grey just underneath his little belly there. Don't worry, I have not forgotten the legs. The legs are going to come. I may have forgotten the legs, but it's fine. And then a little bit of shading just under where that wing would be. Maybe up there a little bit, because they're not, they're seabirds. They'll have a little, be sitting in the mud, little imperfection, imperfections on them. And now to give the body a little bit of sheen almost we're going to take the grey again and that's too much so this is like the tiniest feather thin layer of grey mm, 
I just want it just down the bottom where his tail is. And along the edge there, perfect. Although I reserve the right to take it off and change it, add more, take away some. We're playing just now is what we're doing. Okay, so legs, <laughs> legs or beak, that is the question. I've not got coffee tonight. I've got dilution juice, elderflower, cordial. Mm, it's very tasty. Let's do the beak. We'll do the legs at the end. Beak and eyes. Okay, so with the beak, we've got, in fact, no. We'll start from the outside and work our way in. So we're going to take the orange and Start. So I like to take one end and make a little point. I'm going to sort of line that up with just below. Where his, for <laughs> where his forehead meets. Take it out to a point. And then bring it back in. Oh, that is my belly rumbling. I apologise most profusely. Can you tell it's almost dinner time? And don't worry if you're going a little bit bigger on the inside because we're going to layer on top of it. I just want to make sure we've got a little beak there. I'm going to poke that bottom up a little bit. There we go. And then after we've got the orange outline, Remember, you can pause me, rewind me, if I'm going too fast for you. We're going, so this is a circle now of yellow. So I'm just sort of curling the tops around and then making it slightly more D-shaped. So it's going to go flat there and then curve round if that makes any sense whatsoever but remember I'm going to say this many times no two puffins are going to have the same bill so yours does not have to look like mine and mine does not look like the last one I made <laughs> and then very centre where's my dark blue hiding I'm going to take a tiny dot of the darkest, the dark blue, not the black. And again, we're going to aim for a D shape. So you see, as soon as we pop that blue in, it just screams puffin. There we go. These are sometimes known as the clowns of the sea, I think because I want that to be up a little bit higher because of their wonderful colours, but also because they're just cute and silly. Okay, we're almost, we've got, we've got some good beak, good beak action going on, but they have this little orange spot. Just there so I'm scrumfling up a tiny bit of orange even smaller than that half that popping that in there and now we're going to get to sort of quite delicate bits and I'm going to say tiny and small multiple times I am so sorry and I apologize profusely because we're going to put in some his eyes and a little bit of sort of shading around his face. So I'm taking the black and getting the thinnest line that I can and just 
outlining very gently his beak here. So I want that orange to go on top. There we go. And now I'm going to take a line roughly from just above that orange dot up sort of halfing it there that looks a bit odd but bear with me and we're going to do another sm a really small dot we want the dot to be slightly oval and the ovalness going up the way. Does, does that make sense? Uh, I think I actually want it a little bit bigger. That's a little bit small. Do, do, do. Making that eye a little bit bigger. There we go. Oh, look at that little eye. And then the very final, I say this multiple times, touch is behind the eye. We're putting just the tiniest orange dot. That's a little bit too tiny. Let's make that tininess slightly bigger. Sometimes when you, when you go too tiny, you felt it right the way through and it completely disappears. I've done this many times. Mm, that's too big. But we're still at the blocking in stage just now. So don't worry if everything's not felted down well. And if it looks a bit odd, I'll say this so many times, the more you felt. So we're going to spend about an hour. So we've got about another half hour left tonight on this. And then I'm going to say, put it away for the night, come back to it in a day or two and give it a good stabbing all over and you'll see it all just comes together. Oh, let's pull, there we go. Oh, and you can see just now when I pulled it off, it has distorted it. But especially at this early stage, you can tell you've not felted it in well because you can just wiggle it back into shape. Perfect. I've also spotted I want that to join up there. That's better. There we go. So the black of his wings goes right up to where his beak is. Okay, we've almost blocked in everything. Let's pop in some feet. First I'm going to have a sip of juice and then pop in some feet. So the feet are orange. And so the feet is like one triangle and one slight blob, the technical term. So we're aiming for about so imagine that's that's halfway of his body. We're going to aim for the back half. And again, so that's where I'm going to start his feet from. If I do that in a different colour, let's pop in. So that's halfway there. Scramble up <laughs> a vague triangle shape. And starting from there, just triangling out. You see it's vaguely making a... So going from a thin point where it meets his body, we're just going in a elongated, well like a Dorito chip kind of shape. There for one foot. And then the second foot, even easier, 
we're just going to take a tiny, a tiny dot, pop it there because all you're seeing is, mm, is this foot too small? Maybe it's too far back. Let's, the joy of needle felting, pick it up, our little Dorito and pop it there. Yeah, a little bit further forward. And then I'm going to pop that other one a little bit further forward too. That's better. He still looks like he's about to topple over, but I think they always look like they're about to topple over. So I am happy with that. Okay, I'm going to give it a good three minutes, four minutes, five minutes of just stabbing all over and just to like get everything in and see what areas I want to work on. So please amuse yourselves while I frantically stab. So this is when we're starting to so I'm holding three needles together at the moment and just going over it all and starting to spot the bits that I've missed. So we could have done this at the beginning, but yes, I really like the ability to move things around because pff, nothing's ever perfect first time. working on one area at a time but you don't have to you can do it however you like I think I'm going to put some shadow in the sea just below the cliff so this this is a word I actually meant to say earlier so puffinry is where the puffins have their nest and lay eggs I think that is just an absolutely brilliant word. And this is our little puffin on its puffinry, chilling out. Oh, and while I'm doing this, this is a good time to talk about edging. So you've got multiple options with your edging. There is no right and no wrong. It entirely depends on what you fancy. So with the edges, you can leave them loose and fluffy like this. I love that effect. Really organic, natural look. You can be vicious and just chop them up with a scissor. So once you're finished, just chop it square. That is another way to do it. Or the way I like to do it is when I'm nearing the end and it's starting to get finished, I like to fold in the edges and felt them down. So once it's been folded under and you give it a little bit of felting, it locks those edges in as well. So those are your three of your options. I'm sure there are other options out there, but I've completely forgotten them right now. Hopefully your puffin is starting to look nice and puffin like from the weird mess we had at the start. Oh, mine's going, my puffin's going slightly bald in places. Let's put in some more black. <laughs> oh, we guy. There's nothing wrong. Here we go. <laughs> I 
a little hair extension there. Perfect. So play with the shading. Oh, oh, important point. Really, I forgot. Quick panic and run away. Don't panic and run away. I know it's missing from the feet. So they've got little webbed feet with little toesies between the toes, the technical term, toesies between each web. So we're going to put in a little bit of shadow for his toesies. So I'm going to take the black and just do a, sh a thin line of shadow on the outside there. And I'm going to attempt to do two more thin lines of black, like really thin. Making up little toe lines. I think I need a little bit more shadow. I want to put some actual black just under there. We've come to the fiddling <laughs> hello Robin sorry this was a very unannounced well vaguely announced but I was possibly going to uh, not make it live stream today oh, but if you are gonna if you are catching up and re-watching please do <laughs> don't listen to me on double speed I think that would be uh, very scary <laughs> We're making little poppins. And the week, the week for me starts tomorrow. This is still technically, in the way my week works, this is my Sunday. So in everybody else's week, it's Monday. So technically I should be at home not working today. But, you know, there's puffins to be felted. So I'm just working in a little bit more shadow just now on his belly to give him a nice rounded look. Ah, blame, I blame the internet, not my lack of organisation. Well, people watching this after the fact probably can't see the live comments. Although I figured out a way, <laughs> I think I figured out how to do it. But you know me, it's going to take me three tries to actually get it done. I'm probably going to have to do some private streams um, so I can fiddle with everything and try and work out why my brain does not work. What am, I, what am I trying to do just now, apart from just play with my little puffin friend? <gasps> Robin saw baby puffins. Oh, yes. Can you imagine the tiny little, tiny little fluff balls? Oh, there we go that's what I want to do so I'm taking a little bit of the grey and making a weird highlight there that's going to give an impression of kind of like where his wing joins does that make any sense probably not So Robin says said that baby puffins are too tiny to fit in your hand. Oh my god. Yes. I don't like what I've just done. I'm gonna take it off. 
See? The joy of felting. We can just go, nope. And undo it. Right, let's work a little bit more on this puffinry. I think I need to put in some shadows and things. How long was the run? How many miles or kilometers? Oh, half marathon. Oh my, 13.1 miles. Well done. Oh, I did have a little bit of excitement last week. Um, I went down to the beautiful town of Perth, Scotland, not Australia, um, to do a little bit of shopping and visit some relatives. And Perth was flooded. This, this doesn't compare to your guys. <laughs> Chats about hill climbing. Although I might share my... Share my should I share this story? Probably not. Share my story of my 5k run I did for charity many years ago. So I've been training hard for this 5k. So proud of myself. My brother was going to do it, but he was going to do the 10k. And it was in Edinburgh. I'd been training on a lovely flat path and it was pretty good at my 5k-ish for me on my flat path until I discovered the first thing in the Edinburgh 5k is a massive hill and I was com <laughs> not prepared for it. I, I think I came second last in the end and my brother along with many other people lapped me because the 10k you had to go around multiple times. <laughs> but I was dressed as a giant moustache. So, that's my story. <laughs> oh god, I just shared that. Okay, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm just enjoying felting and, ch and chatting now. I'm just, I'm literally just playing and adding in little bits of colour. I've also just noticed my horizon line is very... Generally the sea is flat. Mine is not. I'm going to add... Add or subtract? I'm going to add a little bit of water up. I did finish. I definitely take it as a win. I'm still so proud of myself for doing it. Um, and yes, the giant must. I made it myself. <laughs> there is photos somewhere, but because <laughs> because it only worked if I held my arms open, so the mustache looked open. When I was just running along, it just looked like I was wearing wearing like a brown sack. But I was very proud of myself. And it's not the strangest thing I've done. Excellent, that looks like a slightly more level horizon line now. I'm going to add some more texture into this water. We've got about 10 minutes left, I think, and then we should be done. Have a little puffiny. But you can keep... I'm just embarrassed now about the, the moustache story. <laughs> 
So in about 10 minutes, we're going to sort of round up the this part of it. But so we're gonna, I'm going to get you to finish up for tonight and then come back in a few days and have another look at it. Because sometimes, especially just now, once you've been staring at it for so long, your eyes, you can't see how good it is a lot of the time or like what little minor tweaks you might need to make to make it perfect. So there are a couple of techniques. So one thing I like to do is I like to take a photograph of it and have a look at it in on the camera or send it to somebody because you get a different perspective when you look at it in a photograph rather than real life. And remember, just now you're looking at it flat on the table. In real life, it's going to be up on the wall. Oh, knocked my camera. So stand back, look away. Hold it upside down a lot of the time can help, or sideways. It'll sort of point you in the direction of what might not quite be where you want it to be. But yours also might just be awesome and wonderful. <laughs> yes, my moustache was blowing in the wind. And slightly soggy because it was raining in parts as well. <laughs> um, now I got distracted again. <laughs> uh, right, what was, I, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so come back in a couple of days with fresh eyes and give it a really good sort of 10 minute felting all over. And it'll all just come together. And you can, so you can leave this as fluffy or as well felted in as you like. So this one's quite fluffy just now, which is, if it's going to be behind glass, that would be fine. Or this one I've felted, in, I've felted in really well. In fact, possibly too well in places. And it's going to be really hard wearing if it's in like a, high touch area if that makes sense now those of you that have felted with me before or even if you haven't but you want to or you have lots of art, wait what am I trying to say we have lots of artistic inspiration you can put loads more detail in the background if you want to. You can put flat. Ooh, let's. In fact, should we put a couple of little flowers in? Let's see, because we've got the colours. So we've got yellow, we've got orange, and we've got white. And so, the areas that these puffins would be a lot of the time, like the coastal areas especially, will have these tiny little white flowers dotted about. And little yellow flowers like the macker in um, Eurist and Harris and Lewis and all that. So you can pop in just little dots of flowers to give it some detail. I know their faces are. So oh, sorry, Robin's just said that the. the little face has got a wonderful expression and it's such a simple face to do just basically that that and then an oval but can just so full of life so we've got our little dots flower dots all over the place you don't have to put your flower dots in if you don't want to you can put loads of them in you could fill it up or just put a couple in. I always try and put an uneven number of flowers in. Because nature tends not to be even. But yeah, I ooh, stabbed myself. I'm gonna do a good stabby stabby all over again. And then I think we are good. I think I've forgotten. I probably have forgotten something. I feel like today is a day for forgetting things. But at least I did not drop my toothpaste down the toilet today. 
and on days like that I'm gonna take that as a win have a puffin. I feel like I want to put loads more dots in. Loads more flowers. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I'm going to do that right now. I want to put a little bit of shadow just along that water line there. a little bit better because it's kind of cliff top so we want to have a little bit of shadow like as if the the water below the cliff is in shadow from the cliff I'm losing my words my words are going I hope you guys have enjoyed my rambling. It's been lovely chatting to you guys again. It's not even going to be a month, it's going to be less than a month now before our next one, which I have not designed yet. But it'll be fine. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed felting with me. There's a Facebook group linked below, just down there, if you would like to post pictures of your stuff we love seeing them please like subscribe did I decide about different shapes what different shapes oh yes I have decided about different shapes <gasps> yes Oh, now I'm excited again. No, stop felting. Right. Yes. Uh, please like, subscribe, do the commenty things and all that jazz. Um, yeah, different shapes are... Oh, excitement. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, give us a message on Facebook or here. Feel free to watch again. And yeah, I'm going to run away. Thank you, my squishies. Have a lovely night.